I'm Peyton List, and my last meal would be pressed salmon oshi from Miku in Vancouver, Skyline Chili with all the fixings, carbonara pizza, cannoli from Court Street Pastry in Brooklyn, and a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard from Dairy Queen. Everybody has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we all gotta die. Today we're joined by the star of School Spirits on Paramount Plus as well as Cobra Kai. She was a Disney Channel regular and is the current founder and CEO of Play Beauty. Peyton List, welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm so impressed. Like you don't have a prompter or anything. I'm like, no. thank you for remembering all that. Just a lot of ADHD going around. Yeah. We try and spit that into the camera. I feel that. Uh, you've also done a lot more than all the things that I dread. You've been acting since a really young age and currently you find yourself playing a dead person on School Spirits, eating your last meal. Yeah, so this is very fitting. And the food is going to be a lot better than a school lunch. Like, she's just stuck with everything in the school. Uh, can I ask, how much do you think about death in general? I don't know, I think about it a lot, especially while driving in, in LA. We could just die so easily, and I think I just think about that way too much. Do you find that comforting or not? Because for me, when people are, if I'm ever worried about let's say botulism in a can of food or a plane going down. I think about how I'm so much more likely to die in LA freeway traffic. I do find that really comforting. Good. Yeah, in a weird way, until I'm back in LA traffic. But yeah, most of the time, like, yeah, when I am on an airplane, I'm like, well, the rate of dying in LA is so much higher than this. All right, Peyton, for the first course, we have the pressed salmon oshi from Miku in Vancouver. Now, we couldn't actually get ourselves to Vancouver, so we did make it ourselves. We got the sushi rice, pressed into a brick with the salmon inside, a thin layer of sashimi salmon on top, brulee spicy mayo, and then a single slice of serrano. Please enjoy and, and tell me about this. You shot School Spirits in Vancouver, yeah? Yeah, and we would just go to this restaurant all the time, and this, I would order takeout, and I, uh, for another project I did in Vancouver, I had to quarantine for two weeks in a room, <laughs> and this was like the only thing that brought me any joy. This is very fitting. I love that emotional trauma response bonding to food. Honestly, I think that's a thing that a lot of people have. Yeah, whenever I'm lonely in the city, I'm like, well, there's that one dish I really like. I love it, please dig in. I, I've never had, okay, so this is called oshi. This is like a pressed yeah. sushi. Yeah, a pressed sushi. I honestly, like, I realized how little I knew about the making of it mm. until this show. Um, it's a trip, I, please dig in. I'm obsessed with like regional variations of American sushi too, especially like growing up in and around Southern California. Yeah, it's always hard to attack it, like. A full bite, love it. Hey, now you play a dead person on a school spirit. You have to eat the whole thing. You have to eat in one bite, otherwise it's a disrespect it's weird. to the chef. It's not weird, it's just not necessarily conducive to like an internet talk show, but it is great. When I'm alone though, I cut the shit out of it. And just really? like, yeah, I cut it into like little tiny pieces because I want to savor every bite. If you like divide this up, then like you somehow get double the sushi because you're not just housing it. Mm -hmm. I love that. You play a dead high schooler who is trying to solve her own murder I'm curious if that affected the way that you think about your own mortality at all. It made me a lot more grateful to be alive because I was like, wow, Maddie wants to be alive so badly that she just yeah. wants to be back so bad. I'm like, discover what happened to her. So I was just very grateful. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it, so in the show, you're stuck in a sort of limbo, right? You have like a, almost a crisis counselor um, that is hurting these dead high schoolers whose spirits still remain. That kind of freaked me out because I think the only thing worse than dying is living forever in a way. And you see the the character who was obsessed with Jack Kerouac, uh, who died in the 50s, who's been there for 60 years. Like, do you think there's a sort of existential torture in the idea of living forever? Yeah, I do. Especially being trapped in one environment and like a yeah. prison environment and not being able to leave. Also trapped in this, the same body, like the same, just frozen. I think that sounds like the worst form of torture. You said something else about playing a dead person that it made you realize that you were living your life part of you being dead, kind of on an autopilot situation. And I think a lot of people can relate with that. I'm curious how you've gone about dealing with that. Like, do you feel like you're not in that anymore? Yeah, I think I got out of that and woke up a bit and in present. I think it just is so much more exhausting to be present and to be really listening to what's going on in the world. I realized that I was just sort of, yeah, stuck and, and not, yeah, I, w I wasn't being present. How do you actively become more present? I don't know why I'm treating this like a pen that I'm waving around, the <gasps> doctor writing down. I don't mean to therapize you here, but I'm curious because I've felt that way too in my life that you're just sort of floating through. Mm -hmm. Are there any techniques you use to be actively more present in life? Sometimes I'll just go in the bathroom mirror and be like, like just look at myself in the eyes and be like, Whoa. just have a little conversation. Like yeah. I read a book recently about mirror work and I liked that. Like just, I mean, I only read the first chapter and then it was too much. It was no, 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 but I, I do that and then I say that I read the yeah, whole book Yeah, I'm like, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I know a lot about mirror work now. Uh, but <laughs> the world's preeminent expert on it. Yeah. When you say be present to things, do you mean being present to 
the bad things that are happening in the world or being present to the good things that are happening or both? Are they sides of the same coin? I think both. I think both, but like mm. not letting the bad consume and yeah. the giving into all of that. Like there's the reality and then there's every, like uh, just with all the news and, and everything else. Uh, do you think the younger generation is dealing with that doom and gloom a lot more? I think so. I mean, I've been hearing a lot about the depression rates for like young girls are because of social media are like higher than ever. Like the suicide mm -hmm. rates are insane. Like, yeah. um, it's, yeah, it's intense. Like I just, they're going to be able to trust their gut and themselves mm -hmm. like more than ever. Probably. Because they can't trust the things that they're consuming as much. Yeah. Because like even with my grandparents, like they get those like fake spam calls mm -hmm. and they believe every word of it. Yeah. They'll they'll call me up and be like, your cousin's in jail and oh. they need money. And I'm like, grandma, grandma that's grandma. not real. Like, don't click anything on Facebook. That's crazy. So you're hopeful for the next generation mm -hmm. more so than anything. I think so. I think that's incredible. It's As really somebody cool. who's had a lot of younger fans, like, have you seen the way that they sort of changed throughout the years? Because they watch the show too. Like, they mm -hmm. just treat me like a friend when they come up. So they like let me into their sort of world and their mind. And like, that's probably the experience I'm most grateful for. It's just like being able to hang out with kids and like yeah. know what's going on in their head. How plugged in are you personally to social media? Or does somebody else manage that? Like, are you able to, to step away from your own? I'm pretty plugged in. Hell and yeah. Even like Ride not. the lightning, screw it. Yeah, I, I guess that's why I can like even understand a little bit into mm -hmm. like how it feels to get those comments. But like, I also feel like I'm lucky to be at an age where like I kind of know myself more and then I'm able to like remove myself from yeah. those comments. Um, because I, I've been doing a TikTok live with like Paramount to promote the show. And I was like, this is so weird to be seeing like live, anyone just has access to you and is able to just say anything and you have no idea who they are. And I've never gone out of my way to comment anything mean on anyone's page. Like, I'll think it, but I won't oh, comment it. Oh yeah, of it. course. Uh -huh. So I just wonder like who, what kind of person would do that? If I could I figure it out, if you could tell me, yeah. why do you do these things? I did not think the conversation was going to go here, if I'm being honest. <laughs> we don't know where it goes. We just eat the food. I'm yeah, exactly. This was all about food and mm. sushi. <laughs> this is good. Mm -hmm. I paid for course number two. We got the Cincinnati Skyline Five Way, which is not a euphemism for anything else. <laughs> spaghetti with the Skyline chili on top. We got the beans, we got the onions. We have just a mountain of shredded mild cheddar cheese. And then of course we also have Cincinnati's finest Skyline hot sauce, <laughs> some oyster crackers on the side. Did you first eat this? I'm gonna take a wild guess. 2015, you did an appearance at the Cavalcade of Custom Cars in Cincinnati. Is that when you had this? Mm-hmm. Let's go. What the hell? A, I don't even remember that. I'm a bit clairvoyant. No, I Googled what the hell does Peyton List have to do with Cincinnati and why oh. is a five-way on her meal? Oh my God, I Only can't believe thing that, was I, even, that was even online. How was, oh my God, how were the custom cavalcades of custom cars? So random, so <laughs> random. Great, I'm not a car person, so I couldn't tell you. It's it just so there random. meeting fans next to yeah. a Pontiac? Yeah, like at that age, I would just like travel around randomly and like my mom went to high school there, so she was like, we would go to oh. Sky Skyline after football games and like you have to go. Uh, what was it about Skyline Chili? This is like the most on brand food for us that has somehow never appeared on the show. I think like the cinnamon and chocolate, like I love um, anything with chocolate in it. Oh, that's like, cool. like a chicken mole, like enchilada nice. or something like that's also one of my favorite foods. But I, I, she said that it was like an acquired taste and she kind of warned me that I wouldn't like mm -hmm. it the first time, but I loved it. It's like a, gen it's a generational thing. I mean, you mm -hmm. actually got that in the gene pool the acquired taste for Skyline Chili. I guess so. Yeah, those are the, the jeans, the American jeans. And like, I don't, I would order cans of it. You can order like Skyline Chili. I'm not gonna lie, we used online. the can because we yeah. were like, we you don't want to mess up the original recipe. <laughs> no, chili was like meant to be put in cans. Yeah, that's like, why it's, it's like a last meal and I try not to eat it all the time. It's a good point. It's a good point. But, Please dig it. Um, I wanted to ask you about traveling to random places and eating food while you were filming. Yeah. Um, how was Great Neck New York? I remember being there at like 16 with my mom and all the cast, I was working on a movie there. Actually, I remember that a lot of the community was Jewish, so mm -hmm. everyone like on a Friday night, I'd be like, where is everyone? It was a ghost town. Shabbat shalom, um, Shabbat, mm -hmm. yep, and, um, but everyone was so nice. I actually do, I did like Great Neck. I liked the people there a lot. Um, but yeah, I would just eat at all the places with my mom because uh, everyone was like out and able to go drink and like hang out and be mm -hmm. friends. But I was just like, it, at this weird age. How were the eggs? The eggs. I have to do that. I have to. I have to show you this. This is from the Great Neck Diner, um, where up. you have a photo Shut up there. We're putting up. it on the screen. Shut How much up. did you heart the eggs? Oh, I guess a lot. That is Apparently. so crazy. I feel like that's a different person. That is yeah. insane. Oh my god. I know, is, How do I not remember? Like I don't remember anything. Yeah, but you made an impact on the owner of the Great Neck Diner. 
Also, for context, That's my all a girl can really My dream. fiance is from Great Neck. No way. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you shot at Great Neck North, which is yeah. the high school she went to. Um, and so when I brought up the fact that you were going on the show, she was like, I'm gonna call my brother and see if he can get a photo of the uh, that is of the so funny. Thing, so. I love her for that. Well, please yeah. dig in, dig in. I'm stopping you from eating. Do you toss this all together or you're, you're going straight knife and fork, like cutting it? Yeah, I I don't know the Cincinnati way. I just like go for it normally, but I definitely it. want some of these crackers on it. Oh yeah, so. I'm gonna hot sauce it. That... Also, I feel like if Cincinnati sees this, you're gonna like get the key to the city. Cause you're, to I me, really the most high profile so. Cincinnati chili fan. I really, really hope so. I would love to go back and like just eat Skyline. Like hang out with like people that work at Skyline and just hang out in the bath. That'd be fun. If you keep it up, you're gonna be the mayor of Cincinnati. In I love That's that. your fallback plan. That would be amazing. <laughs> oh my god. So wait, did your girlfriend? How long did? She, oh. <laughs> my, my bad. How long did she live in Great Neck? A whole life until college. We're a small Jewish community. Everyone was so supportive. Like I remember, like people would just like wait outside of the high school, like. For us, and it felt like we were performing in front of like a live audience when we were doing scenes because so everyone funny. from Great Neck would just like hang out outside of the school. Now yeah. that we're talking about it, like all the memories are coming back to me. Yeah, it was fun. And like this producer on it, uh, he had a farm close by, this French guy, Claude, and he he told me that he killed and ate his rabbits. And I Hell cried. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know no, why. That's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cried when he told me that. I was like, how could you raise them and then eat them? Like, I need like a separation from the meat. And then he brought me a rabbit the next day. What'd you do with it? I kept it. I brought it back on the plane and I didn't get like any- Oh, he brought you a live it. rabbit, he not brought, a dead skinned one. You know, he brought me a live rabbit. Okay. And I named it Claude after him. And it was in my tiny hotel room. It would, everywhere, like I didn't know yeah, what to do. Yeah, that's what rabbits do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they breed and then eventually they're eaten by people like me and Claude. Yeah, Claude like, Came back with me on the plane. Never You're think. saving lives out there. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati and rabbit kind everywhere, as mm -hmm. you would think. This is incredible, by the way. This is so good. I've never had Skyline Chili, and I- You've never had it? I've never had it before. I, I feel like I know so much about it, and I've just never actually eaten a prop. I could tell you it was invented by a Macedonian immigrant. It has nothing to do with chili con carne. I could tell you all the facts, and I've never experienced it oh, cool. until now. So thank you for this this true gift. Oh, I'm so glad. Do you think that it's an acquired taste, or do you like it? Like you appreciate it immediately? I believe that humankind is genetically predisposed to love every flavor that is inside this. It is only through their own biases that they would turn their nose up at it. Taylor's oh, yeah. laughing because he's from Pittsburgh and he gets a lot of crap from being from Pittsburgh. Taylor, it's not your fault. I wanna ask about you playing a lot of high schoolers and also you said that you sort of struggled to compartmentalize what was a character and what was yourself. You told a story about your mom calling you out for speaking to her in the voice of Emma. Ah! How have you like found yourself while also continuously playing characters through development? You know, people would come up to me and they would really like the character. And so I'd want to be that character for them. Mm. I'm like, I think they like this character more than they like me. Whoa. So like, maybe I should start acting more like them. Yeah, it's confusing when you're like 13 years old and finding yourself is odd. Like I never like, I didn't know how to do like my makeup or hair or anything. So like, I felt like I looked like a different person, you know, when going into it. I yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you did judge yourself really hard or you gave yourself a certain amount of grace for dealing for not having like a, you know, traditional childhood? I wanted to get out of school. That was yeah. like my, I was in middle school and like I hated middle school in New York so much that I was like, please God, let me book this movie mm -hmm. so that I can get out of here because everyone grew up over the summer and I came to school and I was like, Oh my God, I, I don't know what to do here. Like I need to get out. Tell me about Disney prom. Yeah, so Disney prom, like I think I went to like one mm. around like a Valentine's day dance or something. And it's just like all of us that are on shows that work on like wherever we are, just are all invited. And we all work on different sets and like. Did, did you feel a sense of like kinship and community? Like, hey, these are all people who understand my general life and what I've dealt with. Like, are, do you have any crazy Disney prom stories? No really crazy ones. Like nothing that stands out. I feel like I'm like missed a few of them too. Can Not you because just I didn't make want one to up? I wish I could. I'm like, yeah, Mickey Mouse was like. Please do God do that to us. <laughs> we can't handle another lawsuit. All right, Peyton, for your third course, we have a carbonara pizza. So this is some homemade long fermented pizza dough. We've topped it with a garlic cream sauce with the guanciale in it, topped it with some low moisture mozzarella, more guanciale, a soft egg, and a lot of pecorino romano and black pepper on it. Uh, may I slice you up? Yes, please. Uh, tell me it about this pizza. Amazing. Tell me about where it comes from. Honestly, like my dad just makes like a great carbonara pasta and I just thought it'd be amazing on pizza. Like I, I love pizza with egg on it like this. Like I think that's my favorite thing like when traveling through Italy, like that is the one thing I like crave so much. Um, wow, that looks insane. 
yeah. The scissors were a last minute call. I need everybody to know that. I guess I just thought like if I was going to die, I would definitely like, look, that looks amazing. This does look incredible. Wait, so is this actually a dish you've ever eaten before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. I thought this is just like, yeah, I'm gonna try an original. No, I'm gonna put you to the no, stress test. No, no, I have tried this before. Go into this. Uh, if you want seconds, I can cut you another slice. It's just gonna take me 20 minutes because I don't know how to use scissors. No, that's better than uh, what I could do. Cheers. Oh my God. I know what oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm you. so into it. Thank you for this gift. This is amazing. Mm hmm. We never would have made this without you. This, we're gonna, can we like name this pizza after you? Oh my God, please. This is my favorite thing. The way they named the eggs after you at the Great Neck Diner? I don't think they did. Oh, unless they did, that'd be hilarious. So you can get like the Peyton That would be great. Omelet. Yeah, it's like, I feel like, where is it? Like, there's like really fancy places here that like name their like pasta after like Gigi Hadid. Like, but mm -hmm. mine is like, the Great Neck Diner eggs. Just like, a plate of like, plain also, scrambled eggs. Eggs are just like not a hot food. Like it's like eggs are the hottest food. What are you what talking about? I, <laughs> I feel like as hold on. No, no, no. Give eggs. yourself some credit. As a taste maker, <laughs> you know, you own your own damn beauty brand. You can make eggs sexy again. Oh my god. <laughs> talking about losing yourself in roles a little bit, I wanna ask you, what do you think constitutes the idea of self? Say you body swap with Jamie Lee Curtis. Just the most famous body swapper of our era. She did right. a great job. Where is a real you? Is it residing in your body now or in her body? In her body. So you believe that like the the mind, right? Not necessarily the brain, because your brains are now switched, but the mind is what constitutes the self. Mm -hmm. But if somebody say wanted vengeance on Jamie Lee Curtis, do you think that they would feel better even if they knew about the body swap, getting vengeance upon her body or your body, despite the fact that your brains are swapped? It depends where they're at, with their like what they think about se the self. Mm -hmm. Because like I think that I'm in Jamie Lee Curtis, so like I would probably mess up Jamie Lee Curtis. But imagine you <laughs> flip yourself. What if you were that guy and you knew that say somebody killed your pet bunny rabbit, right? And they had body swapped. Would you feel better getting vengeance upon the physical body of a person or knowing that their mind is in somebody else? I mean, if you're just trying to hurt them, then like messing up their physical body, because then it's like, ha now you can't get back to yourself mm. or like your vehicle that you've been in since you were born. Like now your vehicle is messed up. If there's a person you could body swap with, who would it be? I'm like, why did the rock come to my mind immediately? I just want to know so much about him. That's no, that's a great answer. It just seems like a politician almost, like the way like he's like mm -hmm. so put together. I wanna know what his like, how he does all that he does. Like he does so many movies in here. Like how does time work for him? How does, I thought you were just to say you wanna see what it's like to squat 600 pounds. Cause I do too. No, no you, I'm good on that. I'm <laughs> curious about the way you deal with grief because in school spirits, grief is a big theme. The grief over lost love, the grief over lost potential, uh, the grief over loss of a friend. How have you dealt with grief in your own life? Someone kind of described it to me well, cause like I lost someone like really close to me in high school. Mm. And they were just saying like a lot of high schoolers like make it like a really selfish thing. Like it like becomes like a lot about them and like them finding themselves. So like mm. I was glad he said that to me so that I like didn't make it about me and just made it completely about that person and like everything else. I guess like with grief, like I just want to make sure I connect with like the people that were most around that person that was mm. just lost. like and just kind of like build community more. Like community just becomes so important. Talking about building community through grief, I know you're on the board of the Cameron Boyce Foundation trying mm -hmm. to cure epilepsy mm -hmm. and you, you know, had a really touching tribute to him and it was very much the opposite of being selfish about that. Um, I'm curious about the way that you view like legacy in death. I'm glad that like, the sort of attention is going towards research and like his family is mm -hmm. such a beautiful family. Like his mom, Libby Boyce, like she, uh, works in like housing the LA homeless and is like such a, and then now she's like carrying on her son's legacy by mm. trying to find a cure for epilepsy and like has found all these researchers and like is bringing it all together. I want to help, but like I also just think about him like, yeah. oh, and like how, and his energy and like how that carries on and how that affected people. How do you want, when you die, how do you want your legacy to affect people? I've thought about that a lot, like since losing him, because it was yeah. like one of the like four kids that were, that were like part of my high school experience. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe just try to be like a decent human and know that like everybody has a story and like everybody is deal struggling in some way and like just be like a little more gentle with humans. Like mm -hmm. that would be cool. Just like be a little more gentle with humans and with yourself. And if not that, it could be Save the Rabbits. Save the Rabbits. Save the Rabbits, <laughs> the official foundation by Peyton Lewis. Yeah. All right, Peyton, for dessert, we have the Dairy Queen Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard. Very excited, I haven't had one of these in years. And then the cannolis from Court Street Pastry. 
in Brooklyn, New York City. I'm excited. Please dig in and uh, tell me about it. Yeah, Court Street Pastry was close to my school in Brooklyn, and I would just like crave cannolis every day. Um, and I loved them so much that like one of our good family friends like sent me for my birthday like the shells and the cream like on the side to fill it in, and that was like my best birthday ever. And Whoa. so they just have been like so memorable. That's incredible. Yeah, we couldn't get these from New York, and so we recreated them as faithfully as possible. Yeah, they look uh, exactly the same, and I have, no, I have no idea what those green things are. We had no idea either, so Nicole actually called up the place and they were like, it's coconut, don't you know that? And we're like, we're from California, I'm sorry, we're new, we didn't know. Coconut. Coconut, and so we have the chocolate and we have the vanilla. Are you a chocolate or vanilla girl when it comes to I'm, cannolis? When it comes to cannolis, I'm vanilla bag. Yeah, Everything same, else same, is same. chocolate, right? Thank you for leaving me the bigger one. That was incredibly empathetic. Oh yeah. Unless you want to switch. Now I, did, I actually didn't notice. notice that that one was bigger you, because I. Do you want the? No, it's okay. No, I, now I feel bad. You can have it. Like you're a guest. Okay, thank you. It's okay. <laughs> we have the look at this blizzard. I know, I know. We're not gonna go home hungry. So good. Not much better in life than a good canola. And the powdered sugar on top. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about the Dairy Queen. What's I mean, who doesn't love Dairy Queen? But if I'm ever on a road trip, if I'm like, mm. I we shoot Cobra Kai in Atlanta, so there's mm. a lot of Dairy Queens. Really? Yeah, but I just like love them. Yeah, when I was working in Toronto, I did like a this like fasting like cleanse, and when I ended it, I, like I ended it with Dairy Queen after like 30 days of like not yep. eating anything unhealthy. Yeah. I, I, so when I thought about last meals, I kind of thought about like everything like epic that I've ever eaten. And like, Love this that. Was, like a Dairy Queen blizzard is one of my, is one of those items for me. Speaking of Cobra Kai, so you played a lot of typically optimistic Disney roles, and then you go into Cobra Kai and you're playing this woman who could kick the crap out of you, also comes from a very tough background, kind of reminds me a bit of your character in School Spirits as well, both real hard nose have to keep up a guard like that. Tell me about what you learned about yourself from switching those roles. I guess I learned that people could believe that I seemed like a badass, like who could fight people. Because when I auditioned for Cobra Kai, did it because I thought it'd be like a fun challenge for mm -hmm. me to, to audition, but I never expected to get it. Yeah. So I was really shocked. That's so funny. I mean, like, you're glad you did, I imagine. Yeah. No, I'm really glad that I did. I'm glad I went for it because I feel like I tell myself no sometimes, like before someone else can, because mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, I like limit myself. Yeah, that was pretty shocking. <laughs> that was the first thing that I'd seen you in. So I was like, oh, she must play like the hardcore chick who could kick the crap out of you and everything. And then I went back and rewatched. Yeah, I wasn't just watching Jesse and Bunked as a 26 year old, to be clear. <laughs> um, not that there's anything wrong with that. No, it's a good television. Listen, I'll go back and rewatch them. Anyway, <laughs> point is, uh, to me, that was like a very natural role for you. And so it was mm. weird hearing you talk about how. That wasn't always the case. Everyone just thought of me as like this like prissy, like mm -hmm. bratty, like privileged girl who like grew up on the Upper West Side sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So then to play that role was like the complete opposite. So I kind of just, I love to just like flip flop and like play the opposites and just yeah. like play a bunch of different things. And I think like everyone loves to like box people in and I think it's sure. fun. Do you think people actively root for the downfall of Disney stars? Mm, I think people like to know like your fate is kind of in my hands sort of thing. Oh, interesting. So like we can bring you down, but also then like, I feel like they love to bring people down, but then also like love to watch them like rise again. I don't know. Do you think that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy for some people? Right, I, I kind of thought as a kid, I was like, what, what's your own kid doing? Yeah, like, honestly. Your own, your own kid's yeah. in college, right? Like what are they doing? Mm -hmm. Because you're just seeing like the first time someone's like smoking a blunt. Like yeah. you're just seeing it on like Instagram or something. But I'm like, your kid might be like doing a lot worse things. Like yeah. focus on yourself, focus on your own kids. Like I know you also had to deal with certain things growing up, being young and in the public eye. Uh, you've talked about being exposed to creepy behavior online. Um, I mean, what are the emotions surrounding that? Is it anger? Is it fear? Resentment? I, it's funny. Like I wish I like felt like angry or like, mm fearful or anything like I don't really have like major feelings toward it I'm mm. just like damn like because I just think I think about people's minds being broken so like yeah. it doesn't even make me feel like angry I'm just like ah oh, their wires are like crossed but it sounds like you have an incredible amount of empathy I do right? that's Which like it's like a problem yeah. though I wish I could just be angry but I just like feel so bad <laughs> all right you ready to get into the lightning round yes Peyton other than me who is the one person dead or alive you'd want to share your actual last meal with my twin brother that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, if you got a twin, mine as well. I'm like, we came into this world together. Let's go out. You're gonna kill him too? He doesn't have to die in this. Okay, well, at least you could like see me go out. Okay, that's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, who's your dream eulogizer at your funeral? Can't be your twin brother. Oh my, Jack Black. Oh God, so good. That'd be so fun. It'd be so fun. Uh, what song do you want them to play at your funeral? I feel like nothing from the, the school, school of, of rock. Now, damn no! it! You were actually gonna say, "Fine, you can have the school of rock soundtrack." Go ahead. Um, I feel like the one that's like, "If you wanna be a teacher's fan." Man. And we can only sing three seconds without getting sued. Okay. Uh, so that was enough. That was beautiful. Uh, who would win in a real life fight, you or Mary Mouser? Oh my God. 
We're talking not karate, not points. We're talking street fight. No. Outside of a bar. Oh, God. You know, she spilled her vodka soda on you and you're not having it. Oh, my God. If we were drinking, she would probably win because I would just be like, I don't know. Give, I'm a pacifist. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> What's your biggest regret in life? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I know. Casual. Why, Why are you asking you me this? You didn't invite a blizzard and figure it out. Let's solve some things here. I don't know. What's yours? I think not tending to relationships more. You know, not just stepping up. I could have, it would have been a three second text. It would have been a three second text. And now I haven't talked to this person in two years. The hell's wrong with me? It's a series of those three second texts that are probably my biggest regret in life. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being kinder. You can steal mine. It's fine. Yeah, I'll steal yours. Thanks. <laughs> Finally, are you happy? Yeah. You seem happy. Okay, good. You're filled up with Cincinnati chili and blizzard. How could you not be happy? Ask me this tomorrow. I'll be sad. Uh, Faden, thank you so much for being with us. You've eaten your last you. meal. Can you speak your last words right into that camera right there? It's been real. Was that Maya Angelou? <laughs> you know, a lot of people have said it. I have nothing profound to say. <laughs> and make sure to check out Peyton on School Spirits on Paramount Plus. Make sure you watch the entire series. Uh, I'm super emotionally invested. I got to figure it out. No spoilies, but like, was it? Can you tell me what? <laughs> I can't tell you. Not him! Yeah. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. Son of a biscuit. Peyton, thank you again. Thank you. It's back in black. Top your look off in the new GMM trucker hat. Available now at mythical.com.